Hello everyone, welcome to Strange Story, a platform where we introduce you to the leaders of the world making a difference in the society. Today we have an extremely special guest at Stranger Story and we have the US diplomat here in Vancouver office. Uh, we have with us James DeHart. Thank you for coming to the channel, James. Um, thank you, Falak, and thank you for that generous introduction. The pleasure is on mine. So, so basically, anybody who's looking to become a diplomat are wanting to know what the life of a diplomat is, is going to watch this video. Oh, okay. Yeah? So, uh, we have a live example of successful one from with me. So, we'll start with the your childhood. So, how was your childhood like? Did you always want to become a diplomat? Well, um, I wasn't always sure that I wanted to become a diplomat, but I grew up uh, with my father as a diplomat. I so I knew about diplomacy. I knew about the Foreign Service at a very early age. Uh, and we lived overseas uh, in, a, in a number of different countries. We lived in Australia. We lived in Hong Kong, uh, the Dominican Republic, Mexico. Uh, and, then my, and then my dad retired. So I was very familiar with Foreign Service life. And I always knew that I would do something international. I knew a lot about the profession. And then I was surrounded by friends who didn't know anything about the Foreign Service. Oh, okay. And when I told them that, oh, maybe someday I'll join the Foreign Service, they thought I was saying the Forest Service. <laughs> um, so I had to explain. So it's like, you know, from childhood you were groomed to be like that? Or you, you saw somebody doing it and then you just wanted to be like that person maybe kind of an idol for you? Well, the one thing that struck me about uh, my dad's job was he clearly loved his job. What do you love most about your job now? I Now when I look back on my career of almost 33 years, I've come to realize is all the really inspirational people that I've had the chance to work with, yeah. it's a job that brings you into contact with really smart people exactly. across all sectors, yeah. um, whether it's in business or politics, government or the arts. Yeah. And when you're among all those people that are, that are just living life, I think, in a very meaningful way, exactly. then that becomes very inspiring and invigorating. And so um, I think that's been the biggest privilege yeah. of being in this career. Exactly. And to the listeners listening to this, maybe you need to surround yourself with people who are more smarter and intelligent than you so that you can learn and grow with them. And if you are with people that are inspired and successful and smart and well-intentioned and, um, and doing good things with, uh, with their lives, it will rub off on you and it makes you a, it helps make you a better person. So yeah, that's a nice takeaway. Uh, but there are always, you know, two sides to a coin. Maybe there are things that you would like to change about your job. Anything specific you have in mind? Well, I will mention only one small thing because okay. it's the season. But every, you know, every every year we have to take these um, little online trainings and very bureaucratic topics. Mm. Um, so there's a certain amount of, you know, so we have to train every year on how to handle information or how to you know, um, support cybersecurity or stuff and sit at a screen and do that. So the little bureaucratic parts of the job that keep us looking yeah. internally, I would rather be looking <laughs> outward. Done with the studies. Yes. Not anymore. <laughs> right. Uh, but I think uh, for everybody in this position and even on similar positions, maybe the CEOs or the leadership roles, uh, I personally feel that, you know, such trainings are really important to keep up with the changing trends in the world because everything is just changing too fast. So maybe this helps. Uh, and uh, maybe we can have less number of <laughs> those trainings, but then we should certainly have yeah. them. <laughs> Maybe this is a bad example, especially <laughs> for people that are early in their careers yeah. and coming up yeah. and um, and learning their yeah. roles, learning their jobs. And um, yeah. there's a lot of professional development that is very valuable. Maybe it was different when your father was the diplomat. And uh, maybe a question for you could be, uh, what was the biggest lesson that your father taught you? Not could be anything related to life as well, not just maybe profession. Any biggest lesson that's still with you? Yeah, so I think um, 
I think those that have taught me things throughout my life, including my father, it's not really some anything that they said, usually. It's more of how they live their lives. And so I'm a big believer that modeling behavior is more important than saying it wow. and telling people yeah. how they should be yeah. um, or what to do. And so I think, I think my dad was a great example in how he conducted himself. Yeah. Uh, and my mother was a great example in how she conducted herself and how she succeeded uh, selling real estate after my dad retired. And she was a phenomenal success in real estate afterwards. And so I'm sure that I watched them when I was um, in the entire time in my career in the State Department. I've been very lucky to work for some very, very good people and very talented senior diplomats. And I learned from them, not by sitting down and hearing them tell me what, what, what to, to do, do, but to observe. Just yeah. watching, what just watching them work. Mm, so um, maybe shadowing is a good way to learn. Yeah, shadowing is a good way. Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, who you work for is probably, at least in my business, um, it's at least as important as the job um, that you're given because, yeah. you know, somebody who's good will um, will be a good mentor, will help you along, and then I think most important model. Yeah. how the job is done. Absolutely. And the other thing that really struck me is that I worked for these fantastic people, uh, very senior diplomats. All of them were completely different in how they approached the job. And mm -hmm. so... It's a different approach. Yeah. yeah. So I learned, I learned from them that there's no single way to be a diplomat. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you're going to be successful, you need to bring your own personality you need to bring your own style absolutely to the role and i think that holds true for any for any job exactly that all depends on your childhood <clears throat> your learnings all these years and that just becomes you know every person has a different way of dealing with the situations coming yeah. to that point i was just reading somewhere would like to share here that you know your boss has more control over your mental health than maybe your spouse or maybe your people you're staying with because you spend a lot of time with them. People you, you're working with have more control over your life somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I would also like you to talk about the mental health issue because we're facing this crisis all across the world. So uh, in this you know, role and everyday uh, dealings, how do you take care of your mental health? Yeah, well, first I, would, I think I would say COVID I think was very hard on everybody. Yeah. I think probably, especially hard on young people, and and maybe maybe the hardest on young people that are entering the workforce for the oh, first yeah. time and trying to find their way. Yeah. And uh, I actually am a pretty strong believer that it's good to be back physically in the workplace and around one's colleagues. I think that that is um, that is good for one's mental health to be around other people and to be interacting in the workplace, especially when, uh, when you're pretty young or starting out in a new job or a new career. I think that's, that's really important. Physical exercise is really important to me. I don't get enough of it. Um, <laughs> it's, there's, too much, there's too much sitting involved in the, in you know, the job. You know, there are all reasons of not doing <laughs> the physical activity. There's, I do that. Yeah, there's plenty, yeah. plenty, plenty of reasons. Yeah, uh, we try to create reasons. Yeah, but I, but I also try to, I, I also try to uh, relax as much as possible Perfect. to not to not be stressed, especially over things that are beyond my control and to recognize if something is going to be beyond my control, why worry about it? And if if worrying about it is not going to make it better, then why to worry? Then why, yes, why yeah. put the energy into That's that? so true. The reason uh, for me asking this question was youth out there, people out there, they're so, you know, sad with their lives. And I just want to show them, you know, a person representing the U.S. in Vancouver takes this these high responsibilities, talking about stress, how to deal with it. If he can do it, you can do it. 
there's nothing that you can't do and your mental health should be a priority and maybe small problems here and there should not disturb the way you deal with life right that was the purpose of asking this question yeah right? yeah and yeah please go ahead it's easier said than done i'm saying it but living it of course is more difficult it's difficult and i have i have two uh daughters who are now young adults and from their experience it's clear to me that being young and coming up now into the workplace i think is 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 more difficult quite a bit more difficult than when i was younger i think the the world throws so much data and information yeah um, so we're and stimulation yeah. and requirements um, at people in the workplace and particularly at, mm -hmm. at people that are starting out I just think it's um, there are a lot more demands there's a lot more stress and also forgive yourself mm -hmm. give yourself permission to fail because you're never gonna succeed if you don't fail along the way mm -hmm. You're going to, there's going to be failures there's but going to be disappointments you're too hard on yourselves yeah, yes absolutely yeah we just want to do everything yeah please stop us <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean you've got to be it's it's okay to fail yeah. and and i think um it's okay not to be so hard on yourselves and maybe one more suggestion from my side talk to a stranger because they are not going to judge you learn from them get inspired and help each other out. Let's make this world a better place. And that's the purpose of Stranger Stories. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on, let's uh, talk about the difference that you have found uh, between Canada and US. Something that you would like to share. Of course, there'll be yeah. a lot of people commenting, uh -huh. uh, but then anything, it's your story. So your your side. Well, I think, I think first of all, the similarities are, are much bigger yes. between um, us in the United States and, and Canadians. Absolutely. Many, many more similarities, Absolutely. especially in our values, the way we think about, yeah. right? Um, including that we're both immigrant countries. I know there's a, we're a melting pot and Canada's a mosaic and that's a little bit different, but fundamentally we are, um, we are immigrant yeah, countries. And, and that is sort of at our, you know, at our essence. Um, but I, a few things I notice, um, there's a lot more hockey rinks in Canada. And so there's basketball courts too, but we probably have, you know, more basketball courts versus uh, hockey rinks. The, the roads, the streets are just a tiny bit narrower, yeah. uh, at least Vancouver here in side. British Columbia yeah. and Vancouver. Yeah. I don't know why that is. So it's actually, it's yeah. a little bit, um, I noticed that driving here. It's difficult. I noticed that at least around Vancouver, Canadians play tennis in the rain. Even when it's pouring rain, I've seen people out on the tennis courts. I'm a big tennis player. But then you can't play. But it. I would never. <laughs> yeah, I haven't played tennis in the rain since I was maybe, maybe try it. 15. Yeah, so I don't know why, why that is, but it's something I noticed. Yeah, that's quite interesting for yeah. me to hear as well. <laughs> yeah. And then you, and then, and then the the big one is. Um, at least in Vancouver, there are flashing green lights when you drive. Oh yeah. And you approach them and you're not supposed to slow down. Yeah. You're supposed to go through those at the same speed. And, and if there's somebody coming from the side, yeah, well, they, they're not allowed. They can sit at a red light forever oh. until, unless a pedestrian yeah. or a bicyclist comes along. Otherwise they are doomed to sit at that red light forever because if they're trying to take a left turn yeah. yeah yeah so i don't understand that system okay maybe somebody would so maybe somebody could write in <laughs> yeah and maybe would, can explain this to us that would be helpful. because driving is uh it's a task especially in downtown vancouver mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that's understandable especially with immigrants coming in and uh, they get the permission to drive for three months with their you know international uh. driver's license <sighs> <laughs> it's just so much risk involved yeah. with people who are already st because we don't know who is driving whether this is an immigrant or, or somebody you know living here from yours so uh, that is something fix is also trying to take an initiative and approaching different organization to help us you know train immigrants mm -hmm. on driving skills so 
I mean, we tried do, doing these kind of things, but then maybe we can let you know once we have that. <laughs> you, you may need an entire class on the flashing green light. Okay. Yeah, I'll just to just to explain that. Yep, that's a good suggestion. I'll take that. <laughs> and just to wind this up, uh, we always ask this question to our speakers: if they have a life message. I don't know. You are you're not you. You more are interested to you know show than to talk, but then because it's a video podcast, it's a talking show. I have to ask this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, any life message for our viewers or listening? Any random thing that, that you would like to share? Because sometimes we we don't get the chance to you know speak out things that we come across. Maybe this is a, another way of putting it. Yeah, um, I think in my experience, I mean, if we're talking about uh, how on the question of how to be successful. Yes. Um, I think it's a lot more uh, about persistence than it is about brains or natural talent. So I think I think my message would be, uh, based on my own experience, uh, if you if you're worried that you know you're not smart enough to do something or you, you're not talented enough, you're not capable enough. Um, I don't think those are the qualities that will help you to succeed the most. I think mostly it is persistence. It is commitment to it and continuing to try, allowing yourself to fail and not, not always succeed, but just persisting in your efforts. And that's what I've seen in my profession is those who have persisted. The other thing I've seen is that, is that um, people succeed you know, when people want to work with them. So you may not be the smartest person in the room, but you're going to be the person that, that collaborates, that is genuine, yeah, that is collegial, that is friendly, that is positive, trying to help. Uh, and that's the, that's the individual, I think, um, that people want on the team yeah. more than the smartest person in the room. Wow, this makes my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah sometimes we just need to hear a few things and then god gives us strangers who you know passes that message to us and you did that for me today <laughs> okay. maybe to somebody else listening out there as well great yeah D diplomacy is all about meeting strangers that's yeah and i always thought you know just telling you frankly that you know diplomats mm -hmm. Because the, as the name says, diplomat, diplomatic person, because it's a very negative uh, notion connected to it. Why, I don't know why, but I would like to be a diplomat. Yeah. I would like to be a diplomat in life because that helps you. That helps the other person. That helps countries. Mm -hmm. So why not to be diplomatic? Well, some and you know sometimes being diplomatic, it doesn't always mean being nice yeah. because sometimes it means people means being honest. And telling people what they need to know, because that's um, if they understand the situation, there will be less likely some sort of miscalculation, you know, that could lead to conflict. Yeah. So sometimes it's being very direct. Assertive. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's a and that being assertive and direct can be a service to that person. Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. a service to the relationship. Yeah, we love it, and we we love being uh, you, having you on the channel today. Thank you so much for your time and for sharing your story. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. <laughs>